the first and only black battalion in Canadian history is being honored in France. These are some of the men who made up the number two construction battalion during the First World War as part of the Forestry Corps. Tomorrow, a memorial bearing some of their names will be unveiled in the tiny town of Sept, France, where they were stationed. Joining me now from Halifax is Douglas Ruck. He is the chair of the Board of Governors for the University of King's College. His father, the late Senator Calvin W. Ruck, chronicled the history of these men. Good morning to you, Douglas. Good morning, Ben. So we are nearing the 100th anniversary of the end of the First World War. Talk to me about why it's important for, that France is unveiling this monument now. Well, it's exceedingly important, Ben. You know, when uh, war erupted in Europe, uh, the C Canada became part of that conflict as part of the British Empire. And young men from across this nation flocked to the recruitment offices to, be, to join in and to give of uh, their best for king and country. And among those young men were also young blacks. And whereas the white individuals were greeted with great joy and taken into the fold, the black soldiers were rejected, not because of any physical impairment, but because of the color of their skin and the perception that they, in fact, would, not, would be inferior and not make good soldiers. And they were rejected. And therefore, for, from 1914 to 1916, they fought for the right to fight for their country through protests, through petitions, and bringing pressure to bear. And finally, in 1916, they were granted the right to join the Canadian Expeditionary Forces, but not with the white soldiers, in a segregated, non-combative unit. They went to war, Ben, not with rifles, but with pickaxes axes, and shovels. Well, I'm glad that you brought that up because I don't know that a lot of people are familiar with what exactly this battalion did. Can you break that down for us? What was their role during the war? Well, as a construction battalion, when they finally made it overseas, uh, they served, as you mentioned in the, in, the, in the introduction, they were connected to the Forestry Corps. And in doing that, they therefore uh, cut trees uh, made for, for lumber, for trenches, uh, for, 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 for making uh, boardwalks, and for providing to the military. In fact, they were near the front lines. They also were involved in moving the dead and the wounded off the field of battle. But once again, they were a non-combative unit. And therefore, even when overseas, they were segregated. They were kept to themselves. And they received, mind you, inferior treatment even at that time. The segregation never stopped. Uh, they, in fact, received their supplies. Generally, uh, they were the last to receive their supplies. Oftentimes, they were denied such, such basics as underwear and socks while serving overseas. And they were, just as mentioned in their name, a construction battalion, which, mind you, was very important. But they were relegated to that role, not as, as what they wanted to do, but that was the only choice that they had. Well, this is going to be uh, certainly an honor well deserved. Uh, Douglas Ruck, thank you so much for bringing us all up to speed on something we should all know a little bit more about. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ben.